Jennifer and welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be quite a chatty video so grab your coffee, grab your tea, hot chocolate, whatever floats your boat. I'm filming this late at night so I'm just going to be drinking water so I can go to bed later. But today's video I'm going to talk through like if you have an interest in modeling how to get started. I've been modeling for about four years and so there's just like a lot about the industry I feel like is hard to look up and it's hard to research when you first want to start so I just want to share sort of starting from the beginning like you have no experience you don't know what you're doing like what to do agencies stuff like that and just talk about it so i personally live in minneapolis which is you know it's a it's a city but it's not a huge city it's not like your chicago your la your miami's and so this video will all you know it will just be of my personal experience and how i kind of wish i would have started or the advice i wish i had and so it's different for everybody to kind of break into this industry so take this for what you will but i think it would be helpful if you kind of don't know where to start and just need like somebody to talk you through some things so let's just get started all right i actually wrote my thoughts down i was actually originally going to do this as a get ready with me but it just felt like i had too much to say and it would drag forever and it probably already will so first thing on my list is do you sign with an agency or not? And that is something that I think a lot of people right away think that they have to start with an agency. Some people don't want to don't want to be with an agency. My answer is if you want to be serious at all about modeling, you will need to get with an agency at some point in time. Sooner probably better than later, but don't feel like you have to get into with an agency right away. So I just want to like nip this one real quick. Yes, agencies will take a percent of your pay, usually 15, 20%. But I have personally been on shoots before where like I was not booked through an agency. I was kind of booked through Facebook or social media. And then there were a couple other girls there that were also modeling that were booked through an agency. And I thought, you know, yay, great. Like I wasn't booked through an agency, so I get 100% of my pay and the agency isn't there to take a cut. So I was pretty proud of myself. However, after the shoot, I found out that the other girls were actually paid over double what I was paid. So even though the agency took a cut, they still got paid a lot more than I did. So in short, yes, you're going to want to get with an agency if you want to be somewhat serious about it or more serious about it, whether you want to make this your full-time job or not. If you want to like, you know, make a buck, you should get with an agency. Also, I just want to say right off the bat too, if you do get with an agency, you have to be able to be flexible with your schedule. So if you are in school, you have to be able to like skip days here and there, even skip an hour there, here and there for auditions, for shoots. If you are working, you need to have a job that is flexible or it comes out with your schedule, you know, two weeks a month ahead of time where you like solidly know when you are free and when you are not. The one thing about this industry that it it can be super last minute and it eats up a lot of your time. So for example, like today, I might find out about an audition that I have to go to tomorrow. And I might have to go somewhere between noon and, noon and two, sign up for a time slot that I have to just figure out how to like leave work and go to that. And then they might also say, okay, well the shoot is, you know, 10 days from now, great. The problem is they will not tell you if you have not booked it. They will only tell you if you have booked it and this is through an agency. So an agency, an agent might email me and say, hey, audition tomorrow, shoot in 10 days. But the problem is they won't tell you if you don't get it. So that's kind of what I mean in terms of like you need to have a lot of flexibility because you might need that day off, but you might not. And so that's just like up to you to plan. If you don't, if you're like not with an agency, obviously you have full control over your own schedule. You have full control over what you submit yourself to, what you don't, but you just like don't have as many opportunities for jobs. You will get paid less like me. So yes, agency, enough of that. Let's move on to like actual agency information. So there are basically two ways to get with an agency. Uh, you can either submit or you can get scouted. That's basically the two ways. If you get scouted, um, Good for you honestly like you can be out and about somebody will come up to you and just say like hey I'm with you know X Y and Z agency would you be interested in coming out trying I was not scouted I was submitted so if you are scouted I don't have a lot of advice for that or how to even get scouted because I didn't get scouted so we're gonna move on to the submission part so when you are looking for agencies sort of in your area know that there are some agencies that only work locally 
and then there are some agencies that work sort of nationally or even internationally with the larger agencies we call mother agencies while like the smaller agencies you know might just be your local agency or people that work in like your state and the surrounding states if you cannot just like get up and travel any day of the week local agencies are obviously better because they're only going to submit you for jobs in your area a lot of times too local agent local agencies will place with mother agencies so like some of the local agencies in Minneapolis I know have placed models with larger mother agencies and people have been to Milan, to Paris, to Korea, to Japan doing shoots, doing jobs and that's great. Like if you, especially if you want to make that your full time job, your goal is to get with a mother agency and work nationally, internationally because there just isn't enough jobs in one specific place to sort of make a good income for any one person. So get with a local agency if you're like me where like i work a full-time job outside of modeling modeling i do for fun it's nice to make a buck i do not want to sign with a mother agency because i cannot just like get up and leave i cannot just like get up and take six months off and go to korea to do shoots uh so that's why i'm only signed with somebody local who is absolutely fabulous so before you sort of get into an agency before you get started modeling you want to sort of figure out what kind of modeling you want to do and I will basically not talk about nude modeling I do not do any of that I do not do implied nude which is like you're not technically nude in the photo but like you're just like covering yourself in certain parts I don't do full nude like I don't know like swimsuit is maybe as far as I would go and I don't really even shoot that most agencies do not do anything like that most agencies do not deal anything with that if you know you want to get into that line of work like that's a whole different industry honestly than like fashion and commercial so i feel like there's this stigma that like oh to be a model you have to take your clothes off no you don't like you literally don't have to okay anybody can get into modeling don't feel like you have to be six foot tall 120 pounds to get into modeling you know um you don't have to have super clear skin you don't have to have like there's no any one thing you have to have as long as you kind of like know what you want to do so there's kind of like two basic like large buckets of sort of um, in this industry and the first one is like commercial lifestyle which is where I play the most and that's anything from like a car commercial to like you know a supermarket commercial to like you know your local boutiques and stuff like that versus like the other sort of big bucket is high end high fashion editorial type and that sort of photography is more like Vogue, like GQ type of, you know, you do need a certain body type, you do need to have a certain look to sort of break through in that bucket. So because I'm 5'3", there is basically no way I'm ever going to do high fashion. There's no way I'm ever going to like be on a runway in New York. And you just kind of have to either accept that or like work really hard to get past that hurdle. So when you kind of decide on which bucket you want to play, or maybe both, like maybe you can do both. The thing with commercial lifestyle that's really nice is like they want people of all shapes and sizes. They want people of all ages. They want people that basically like look like everyday people. Like that's the point, you know? Uh, so that's where I normally play is sort of this lifestyle commercial type area. So when you're looking for an agency, depending on which bucket, you want to see that the agency plays in that bucket and plays in that bucket quite often. Like some agencies are really focused on high fashion, very focused on editorials. Some kind of book most of their clients through the commercial lifestyle type. And so I tend to go towards that. Like my agency almost exclusively does like commercial lifestyle. Like they don't, like they will not never send somebody to like New York Fashion Week or anything um, unless they get placed with a mother agency that sort of has that in. And also when you submit to an agency, I know this is about modeling, but I want to touch on acting as well because a lot of agencies, especially when you're in smaller areas, will sort of ask you to be open to both. And even if you have no experience acting, you only want to model, just be open to it because like, if I'm going to be honest with you, if you have no acting experience, they're not going to book you for acting anyway in terms of like, they're not going to give you a, a speaking line, but speaking line parts do pay better. So... I would suggest at least trying out acting. So for me, I don't have any formal training in acting. I don't have time to take, you know, a three hour class every week, 12 weeks on end because I just have work commitments and I don't feel like I should take a class and I'm going to miss classes. And so a lot of times when I get booked for acting, it's for background acting. So it's for like, you know, the people that normally people don't notice in commercials, like TV commercials where it's, they're like blobs in the background or, 
you know, they're just like behind the main speaking actor, like kind of doing something, you know, at a coffee shop, reading a book, that type of thing. And those things are super low pressure. Like, yes, it doesn't pay quite as well, but you could probably get away with getting paid anywhere between like $100 and $500 for an eight hour day. And most of the time it's just like, you know, walk from A to B or sit here and read a book or something super easy, like you hardly even have to focus. So I would recommend at least branching out and at least being open to it because if you, the more things you are open to, the more options your agent has for you. So when you are looking for agencies, start with somebody local, you know, look on their website, look on their Facebook, look on their Instagram, like sort of social media, like they should really obviously be registered through like Google or something where they're like a legitimate business. And you want to look for that they have a very professional website. You, when you scroll through their Instagram, you wanna see that they are A, tagging their models, B, see if they are tagging any mother agencies because some local agencies will tag their mother agency when they do book, you know, one of their models into a mother agency. So those are things you wanna see just that like, you know, the same, same actors are being booked for multiple things because a lot of times some of these agencies what they'll do is they will let and like they'll represent anybody and then like everybody basically books one job and that's it because as an agency you cannot manage like 5,000 models if you're in a town like Minneapolis like in a city like Minneapolis you just can't there's not enough jobs to go around so a lot of times on their website too you can actually take a look at their list of talent and you can sort by women, you can sort by um, ethnicity, you can sort by whatever. So when I started looking for an agency, I would go on there and I would sort by women, by Asian, and just see like how many people out there sort of look like me. Ideally, you don't want a ton of people on the roster that already looks like you because they basically are your direct competitor. And so like what I mean by that is like when you go for a job, like if it's me versus like you know, a white girl versus like a Latina, like we are all very different and we don't actually really even compete with each other because the client usually has a certain look that they're going for. If they're going for an Asian person, if they're going for a Latina, like they will just ask for that pool of applicants and they won't ask to see everybody. So you're really only in direct competition with people that basically look exactly like you, you know what I mean? Also, you want to watch out to see how many open calls they hold. So open calls are basically like, you know, the agency is open for a couple of hours or a couple days and anybody can sort of walk up and turn in a resume and meet with the agent um, and see if they can get represented. And while open calls are great, you don't want to be with an agency that has them like every week. Like there is an agency in town that has them literally like every week and that goes back to the whole like they're probably just trying to like represent everybody so that everybody books a job that way you know that's how they make their money agencies make their money by booking you for a job and then when you get paid they take 15 20 percent of the cut so that's how they should be making their money and so when you represent when you have so many open calls everybody gets represented and it's just like it's too many people you don't want to get into that because they're not committed rabbit hair uh, they're not committed to like you as an individual. They are just they want quantity instead of quality. Agencies will only have open calls like once every six months, once every year, or just like special occasions where they're really looking for a specific look that they don't have a lot of. And otherwise, you're you know they always take submissions. Agencies will always take submissions. You can always email them with photos and ask to be represented. But open calls, I would watch out for that they're not too often because that can be a red flag. Also back to the payments and how agencies make their money, their main source of income is booking you for jobs and then them taking 15-20% of your cut. I know I've said that multiple times because this is very important. Agencies should not be charging you to be represented. Like if you have to pay a monthly fee for them to represent you, run away. Like I've had uh, agencies before that will say like, well, it's free for me to represent you, but in order to be listed on our website, you have to pay X amount of dollars but that's how they book the majority of their clients and their talent. So like it makes you feel pressured to do that. And that's not how agencies should be run. Like you really do should not have to pay anything because they need to do their job, get you booked first in order for them to get paid. So I would watch out for that as well. Another thing to look out for for agencies is just uh, exclusivity is one of them. So some agencies will say, hey, like you, when you when I represent you, uh, you are going to be an exclusive, which means you cannot then go to other agencies locally and be represented by them. 
if you are exclusive to one local agency like they are still allowed to place you with mother agencies but you just cannot like go and sign again with other smaller agencies in town and that is good or bad uh, I feel like some agencies will sign both people exclusively and some people non-exclusively and for in that situation it feels like the exclusive talent kind of like gets sent on more auditions get sent to more jobs because to them like you know you are dedicated to them versus when you're not exclusive um, and then when you get placed with a mother agency I'm going to guess that those are almost always exclusive but I don't know because I am not with a mother agency so my advice um, is to not be exclusive unless you are gunning for that mother agency and a really good local agency in town requires you to be exclusive. We have one of those here in Minneapolis. They will require you to sign exclusively, but they do such a good job at placing you into bigger international agencies that, you know, if you can get in with them, it's great but they don't take people that look like me because they really only focus on editorial and high fashion. And it's actually really great to see like, you know, I have friends that have gone through them that are going to, you know, all these great cities and countries and doing shoots, but that's just like, not me. Another thing other than exclusivity is union. So um, I'm not super familiar, so don't like come after me, but the most common union I think is SAG-AFTRA and Basically, like if you are in the union, you have to pay your union fees, but there are some jobs that will only cast that union. And so when you do get those, they do get paid quite a bit and you have really nice working hours. You'll never be overworked. You'll always have food and stuff like that. Um, especially in Minneapolis, it's not worth, in my opinion, to be union. Uh, and union is more common with acting, actually. So with modeling, like there's almost never a union, uh, but there's just so few jobs in, Min in Minneapolis that like if I was union like there would only be a certain number of things that I was eligible for and if they don't work with my schedule whatever I probably don't even make enough off of modeling to pay union dues honestly so I personally feel like if you are focused on modeling like just try to steer away from unions so let's talk about submitting to agencies I'm trying not to be all over the place because I have my notes but my notes are also all over the place so submitting to agencies like I said, you don't feel like you have to be with an agent right away when you are interested in modeling. You're always welcome to go get some experience on your own and build up sort of like a portfolio before you go. So when you submit to an agency, they will usually ask you for either headshots or digitals. Um, it's probably more common for digitals just so they can like fully see what you look like. So a traditional headshot is either like kind of, you know, a picture from the top of your head to probably like below your boobs-ish, like kind of your tummy, just to showcase like your immediate you know right here um, sometimes it's three quarters which means like top of your head it cuts you off at your thighs and it's more of like a you know you could have a little bit of makeup on like what I'm wearing right now is basically too much makeup for most modeling and you do not want to show up to an agency with this much makeup on because you can always put on makeup but you cannot but like if they don't know what you look like under that makeup they will not represent you anyway that was a tangent but digitals though are like no makeup a lot of times you'll even like pull your hair back into a ponytail. You're supposed to wear just like a plain tight fitted tank top with either black leggings or skinny jeans and most of the time you're barefoot and you're literally like against a white wall and it's you know a full it's full body kind of face forward and then like your profile spilling things on my floor um, and maybe like a close up of your face but it's not meant to be anything glamorous. It's not meant to be like you know anything super awesome like people usually take digitals even with their phone and that's literally just to show agencies like literally what your body looks like and what like your you know undone face like undone you know no fancy outfit stuff like that what you look like because like I said they can always make you prettier but if you are showing up with a full face of makeup with all these fancy clothes like sometimes they don't quite know what's under there and they don't know what you look like sort of really natural so when you are submitting pictures, make sure that you are not wearing a full face of makeup. So how do you get these pictures? Like I said, digitals, you can like literally ask your friend, your mom, to take pictures of you standing against a white wall. That is the easiest way to do it. Um, headshots you probably will have to pay for, especially when you're beginning to model. Just look for a local photographer that, you know, when you go through their Instagram or Facebook, looks like they take really clean, um, you know, no distracting backgrounds. Like this would be too messy back here. Um, 
like very clean professional looking headshots and you just want to make sure that like I said you're wearing minimal makeup like plain shirts I'm basically doing everything not what you should be doing when you are submitting the model backgrounds too messy do not wear a pattern shirt do not wear a full face of makeup like this and I would also stay away from like plain black or plain white shirts especially when you go to meet the agent because if they want to take a picture of you likely you will be against a white wall like white backdrop or black backdrop uh, and you will then like blend in which is not good so like I said, get some photos, that's how you submit to the agency. You'll also want to know your measurements, so that's usually like around the fullest part of your bust, around your waist, and then around the largest part of your hips um, are the basic measurements along with your weight and your height is what they usually like to see. And then usually when you submit online, they will call you if they are interested and say, hey, can you come in and meet us? Um, that's kind of how it works. So you also have to keep in mind that headshots and digitals is sort of what they keep on file to book you. And so you basically have to like keep looking the same. If you go and dye your hair, if you make a, tr you know, a dramatic cut to your hair, you just want to make sure your headshots and your digitals maintained by the agency is truly representative of what you look like because that's what most clients will book you off of. And so if you are not what your picture looks like, that gives the agency a bad name and then they will not want to book you for anything. So a lot of people will dye their hair often and what they'll do is like they'll maintain like let's say three different sets of headshots, you know, blonde, sort of anywhere from blonde to brunette and then depending on how they have their hair, they'll ask their agency to sort of switch it. Totally up to you. I don't dye my hair so my headshots basically last forever. <laughs> So what I mean by portfolio too is like, I have a physical portfolio that honestly I have not kept up to date for a while, uh, but I can show you what that looks like. So basically like in this first pocket, I have a bunch of um, headshots that I can like give to people when I'm, you know, auditioning for a job and they need to keep a photo of you. I have like a bunch of loose photos and then I just basically have like pictures of myself. And uh, your, your portfolio, whether it's physical or digital, like some people will just maintain a digital uh, portfolio or just like a folder on your desktop that you have like access to to send to different castings and stuff. You want to make sure that there's a variety of shots. So like this one's very lifestyle-y, you know, here's like some athletic ones. Um, what we have here is like this is a catalog that I was in so I like literally tore the sheets out of that catalog and stuck it in here this is called a tear sheet I know very creative but if you are in like magazines and other publications you do want to try to get physical copies of them and either scan them in your computer or stick them in your portfolio like this just to show that like you've done other things in the past um this one is totally wild doesn't really look like me and you know this one very like 1920s so you just want to make sure that there's a variety of looks in your portfolio no matter if it's like online or in person you know here's some like avant-garde here's like a black and white one so anyway it goes on but you want to make sure that you have a variety of different shots that way when you know when they reach out and say like hey you know we'd like to book you for you know something with makeup then you have a picture with the, like you with makeup on it um, that's more appropriate or like we'd like to book you for a fitness shoot and you have some fitness photos like that would be more appropriate to send in and so a variety is good uh, just to keep on hand honestly and so a lot of times I will kind of get that through different photographers in the city when I do my like actual headshots for the agency, I usually go to the photographer that they recommend. And yes, I do pay my couple hundred dollars to get those headshots because you want the quality ones and you want your agent to be happy with them. And so if they are recommending the photographer, they know they're going to be uh, happy with those headshots. And you want to make sure that if you don't know how to do your own makeup, if you're not confident, book a hair and makeup person because they are there to make you look good in photos and photos are how you get booked. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to touch on in terms of like agency info and stuff like that. So I just wanted to move real quick on to like how to get experience. Uh, so like I said, when you're with an agency, that does not mean you can't go out and do stuff on your own. Um, you're always welcome to do that unless they are truly exclusive and write that into your contract with them, which I do not recommend you sign that then. Like if you cannot go out and do anything on your own, that's not good because how are you gonna get experience, right? Okay, anyway, so for experience, a lot of times the term in the industry is TFP, which is trade for print, which is just like a uh, term for, you know, as a model, I can shoot with a photographer and there's no money exchange because the photographer is going to use their your shots 
you know, in their portfolio. Maybe they're trying something that they haven't tried before. Maybe they have new camera gear that I haven't shot with. So they're getting something out of that shoot. You as a model, maybe you haven't modeled as much or you're trying a new concept um, and or the photographer needs you for something, you're getting photos out of it. Like what you gain is experience and photos and what they gain is either photos or experience testing their new equipment or whatever it is. Like people, both sides gain something from it, which is why it's called a trade. So when you first start, it's very likely that you will either A, not be able to book anything either trade for, like trade for print or if you book trade for print, the quality of the photos will be bad because essentially it's always like whoever has the more, mo whoever has the more experience between photographer and model has to be paid. More experience gets paid and you have less experience, you pay the other one. So a beginner photographer, if they shoot with an experienced model, like usually the model expects to get paid. If you're a beginner model and you shoot with a very nice experienced photographer, the photographer expects to be paid. And you just have to know that when you're first getting into it, that you might have to shell out a little bit of money just to get some experience. And that is totally okay. As long as you make sure that the photographer you're paying for is going to get you quality shoots and quality photos. So real quick i just want to talk about contracts and i am a hypocrite because i am not always good at these contracts especially when i'm shooting with just local people if it's trade but ideally you want to have a contract every time you shoot with a photographer so this is like who has rights to the pictures um does the photographer own the pictures and has the rights to use them for whatever he wants all like for the rest of time which usually for like something like fashion like that's fine uh i don't really care if they want to put it on their website if they want to put it on a freaking billboard i don't care um but also like if the photos that they turn back to you will be a edited or b watermarked you do not want any watermarked photos and you always want them edited in terms of like you know maybe fix the pimple fix the lighting not like totally smooth your face where you're unrecognizable you always want to be recognizable in your photos and the contract should also say like when you should expect those pictures back back ah oh, talking too much and how many pictures you expect back so like a standard contract might say like you know the two of you are meeting on this specific date for two hours uh, in this studio and there will be no money exchanged and within one week the photographer will have all the unedited images to you and you can pick 10 for him to edit and he will then turn the 10 edited pictures back to you in the next three weeks like it might just be something like that where there's just like set times and numbers with things uh, because if you do not have a contract in place they can basically take pictures of you and never get pictures back to you and be like a total um, asshole about it honestly uh, and that has happened unfortunately so you always want to shoot with photographers that are reputable um, if you don't feel comfortable, bring an escort. There should never be a photographer that tells you you can't bring a parent, a boyfriend, um, a friend, anything like that. You should always be able to bring somebody as long as it's for your own safety. They cannot be disruptive though. Like literally they should just be in that studio with you playing on their phone or whatever, but like they should not be disruptive because that is not respectful to the photographer either. So how do you find these photographers? Uh, you can all find them on Instagram, probably search your city, you search like, you know, here you can probably search like MN photographer on hashtags, you'll probably find somebody. I would recommend though going to Facebook and just searching like for a minute, I know for Minneapolis, there's some that are like Minnesota photographer modeling groups out there. However, they want to iterate their names. There's probably like 10, 20 groups out there where it's just like a bunch of photographers and models are in this Facebook group. And a lot of times, you know, photographers will say, hey, I'm, on fr I'm free on this day. Like, does anybody want to shoot when the sun sets? Does anybody want to shoot? Whatever. Um, and once in a while, maybe local businesses will jump on and say like, hey, I have a new line of clothing in. I'm needing some models and, you know, I can't pay you, but you're going to get some pictures out of it. Stuff like that is kind of how you really get started is like connecting with the creatives in your community, getting some experience. Like, do not be afraid to work for free, especially in the beginning. Don't feel like you have to charge for anything. And maybe you do have to pay a little bit in the beginning just to make sure you get those quality shots. But once you get some quality shots to prove that like, hey, you know what you're doing in front of a camera, you can make stuff look good, then you can either, you know, start charging or being a little bit picky about like what you take on. I personally at this point, because of my like commitments with work, um, to YouTube, to Instagram, I basically do not shoot for free unless it's with somebody that I have already shot with and I know 110% I'm gonna get photos that will be beneficial to me because I don't need any more photos for my portfolio. 
I have a resume from from stuff that like my agency books for me that I do actually get paid for so I personally don't do much of that anymore maybe if it's like you know a local business and I want to help them out or maybe if it's like a bigger brand where like hey they're gonna post me on their social media and it would you know I have something to gain from it you just want to make sure that you always have something to gain also real quick I want to talk about classes um, if I'm gonna be honest with you I feel like most modeling classes are kind of a scam there's like they charge a ridiculous amount of money when I think in this day and age there's so many YouTube videos out there that help models pose find a model friend like I said get in those Facebook groups and like I think it's honestly more effective for you to like find a model in your in your community that like is doing a really great job and you feel like she you know knows what she's doing in front of the camera she's with agencies like see if you can pay them for like two hours of their time with a photographer and just like showing you how to pose I don't feel like going to a full modeling class is like necessary or worth your money to be honest unless it's something that your agent like truly believes in I don't know my agent has never felt like she needed to send me to a modeling class uh, runway as well I don't feel like you need like a formal class on runway unless like you just don't know how to walk in heels but honestly my advice is just like wear heels around the freaking house and walk around and practice that runways I'm gonna go off on a tangent here, but runways are also not like what they are cracked out to be, to be honest. Yes, it's so glamorous to see like people on the runway, you know, doing their thing, but let me just tell you, runway, okay, for one, like you need to be a certain height and a certain body shape usually to book runway, especially for in bigger cities for bigger fashion weeks and stuff, like that's where the money is and you just need to have a certain body type. I'm not that. So usually when I book runway, it's stuff that's like for fun or people are raising money for charity or whatever. But runways are super long days. So usually if you have something custom made to fit to you, maybe you need to meet with the costume designer two times, three times just to make sure that what they're designing fits you. So that's time out of your day. That's random parts throughout the year. And then on actual shoot day, like you might have the night before, you might have a walkthrough. You might need to commit three hours so that all the models show up and they do a whole run through of just like you in regular clothes. On runway day, usually it's like, really early like six seven eight o'clock call time for an 8 p.m show because everybody needs to get through hair and makeup they don't always do a great job of staggering models like they don't always say like okay you come at eight you come at nine you come at ten you come at eleven so that everybody can get their makeup done when they get there usually they just make everybody show up really early and you kind of just like sit around and wait you read a book whatever i have been to runway shows where like they literally don't feed you and you have to get pizza delivered like i don't know I don't feel like runways are all they're cracked out to be. You are on that stage for like two solid minutes and then you're done. You're not even guaranteed that there will be good photos because you're always in motion. And honestly, like I've had plenty of runway shows where the photos didn't turn out. I have had some that did and I'm really grateful and I'm glad I got that experience. But basically as of now, I don't do runway. Like unless somebody's gonna pay me, which I don't think people will. Um, I just like don't really have that body type and like the movement to do it unless I don't know. Anyway, tangent. Okay, so here comes all the random little things that I like either forgot or whatever. Uh, so when you are modeling, when you're with an agency, keep in mind that a lot of campaigns shoot about one or two seasons ahead. So like right now, if it's summer, I know there are clients that are booking for winter shoots for Christmas shoots already. And when it's winter, some clients will book for summer shoots. So you want to be really cognizant of like how you're taking care of your body when you are in modeling when you are with an agent because they want to be able to send you to all the jobs that are available and so for me I'm very conscious about like tan lines because if I go out there in a swimsuit that has like a bunch of straps out here and I get massive tan lines my agent will not be able to send me on shoots for anything winter when it's summer like I can't you know right now it is summer here like if I had tan lines and somebody came up and said like hey I'd like a Christmas shoot like she would not be able to submit me because I look like I'm in summer which I am so you always just want to be cognizant of like how you are taking care of your body, how, you know, it's stuff like your nails even, like making sure that your nails are always well groomed, um, making sure your eyebrows are always plucked, that kind of thing. 
Also real quick, just want to talk about model bags, uh, how you should show up to most photo shoots and most jobs that your agent books you for, especially. You basically always want to be prepared. If they say bring one outfit, bring three, bring four, bring options, okay? You always want to be prepared. Bring your makeup bag, bring your hair tools, bring like anti-wrinkle spray if any of your shirts get wrinkled in your bag, bring like 10 different shades of lipstick if you know, you're know you doing your own makeup, bring heels, bring casual shoes, bring all sorts of stuff. You want to make sure that logos are not visible though. Like you don't want to like bring a big sweatshirt that says Adidas because they will like whoever you're shooting for is not going to want that logo in there. Um, in their shoot so like if you have jeans make sure like the pockets aren't like super bedazzled like you want make sure everything is sort of like you know very like more plain no logos stuff like that always just be prepared bring bring extra eyelash glue bring your jewelry bring whatever like make sure you are prepared okay one last thing uh if you are a minor know that it is you are legally obligated to bring a parent or guardian with you to to every shoot, to everything, auditions, everything, uh, because they have to sign for you for everything. So if you are interested in getting into modeling and you are a minor, just know that like your parents basically have to be with you through all of that. So it basically means like your parents have to have a flexible schedule as well. There's been plenty of parents that I see on shoots. I actually love hanging out with them. Like they're so dedicated to their children, bless their hearts. But like my mom would not have been supportive of that. So you just have to make sure that if you are a minor that you get your parent consent first before you kind of like go wild. Okay, so I have talked a lot. I feel like this video is going to be basically way too long, but I hope that you have learned some useful things out of this. I'm sure I didn't cover everything. I'm sure there's, you know, you might have questions out there. Please feel free to leave me a comment. Go to my Instagram, DM me, any questions you have. I'm really always happy to help and share my experience. And again, this is just my experience. This is just how I see the industry. And I'm sure there's other people that experience that industry differently. And that's great. But this is just my personal advice. So yeah, Instagram, Jen Makes Up or The Real J Chang for modeling. Um, DM me on there. Leave me a comment here. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking through all of this. Like I said, I hope it was helpful. Um, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!